Hello everyone and welcome back to Let's Play Europa Universalis 4 with me, Alpha Fire Mega, Mayu in Texas and Denmark. So a couple of years have passed since I recorded the last episode, uh, it's 7th of April 1393 now, and Denmark is enjoying a long-standing peace. A lot has changed, a lot has changed, but I'm gonna tell you about that right now. First things first, we can secure the trade routes. We already have the tax agency and the trade councils. So securing the trade routes, establishing secure ports and trading outposts to provide our merchants with leverage in local markets, lowered construction cost and provincial trade modifier increase, which is awesome. Uh, stability is plus two. We are doing good in that account. When you look at our stability increasing, we are now at 239.94 points and we are getting nearly 15 every year. So we have a really high chance that we're going to get to boss free stability, at which point I'm probably going to try to curtail the lesser nobles a bit more because I kind of don't like them uh, hanging around and enjoying all these privileges. Our first army has been reinforced by an artillery unit, uh, which is the first regiment of Norasilans. Wield Ribodekins, the ones that shoot grape shot and other stuff at enemy. It's a weak cannon, uh, arguably. It's nothing great to look at, but it's a really first step in modernizing our army and keeping up with the trend. Now, I managed to recover a bit of manpower as well. We are now at three and a half thousand, so I'm considering... Actually, not considering, I'm waiting to build another runner cavalry, but we're lacking 0.12 ducats, which we are going to get now on the 1st of January. As our population is increasing, uh, I think we're very near 1,100,000 people. Yeah, our total population is really increasing. So is slightly our country's urbanization. I'm uh, able to support another trade ship. So we're building a... what is it? Uh, it's a crayer? Yeah, a crayer in our capital, which is going to be sent to support uh, the trade in the North Sea. Uh, these bonuses are pretty cool. Uh, you can drop or increase depending on how your provinces are doing. Same with the land force limits. They're really the manpower. We just recently lost uh, the low manpower modifier, so I'm hoping that it's going to be um, regained really fast and that we can start getting manpower again. We're getting only 54 guys every month, which is, I don't know, honestly pitiful. Uh, Bohemia has been involved in a couple of wars, but uh, most of in Nuremberg, they wanted something from them. I don't know if, I think it was uh, some territory seeding or so, I don't know, and they, they attacked them in one of the war were. They won the war. They won the war relatively fast. Uh, unfortunately, the Teutonic Order, again, uh, has what I thought was uh, a peace alliance with Wolfgard, but uh, in essence, it's independence guaranteed by them. I don't know why they keep guaranteeing them. Oh yeah, here's the manpower low again, which will increase our gain of people, they're not 69 each month. Our truce of the Isles have ended. Interesting. But yeah, no matter what I try, they will just not uh, let it go. So if I declare war, I'll have to fight the Teutonic Order as well. My standing army will be pretty good, but Ludwig Peterson is just an appalling, appalling guy, and I don't want him leading my armies. But I'm kind of shaking my pants, <laughs> sending all of the fifth uh, with my armies because he's he's probably even worse than Ludwig. So we might even either ask for uh, a general from the estates or I might try to recruit one and pray to God. But again, the war is probably not going to happen uh, anytime soon. We're slowly running out of time though. That pisses me off. 
I was thinking about threatening war uh, to Wolfgast, but they don't really feel like uh, backing down because they know that Bohemia will support them in case of a full blown out war. So, well, we just have to hope that it's gonna work. Oh, hey, speaking of the devil, Bohemia just declared war on Austria. Oh, come on. Let me see. Oh, yes! It involves Hungary as well. Oh, my God. That is awesome. That is awesome. So, come on. Give me that last unit. How long? 80 days until the cryer is finished. And then we can start recruiting the Runa Cavalry. And when that is done, we are attacking Wolfgast, everyone. Oh, yeah. Well, we got the family ties uh, event. For the past couple of days, we've been entertaining a guest from the Royal Court of England, the once home of the Queen Consort. After a full week of hunting, feasting, and gossiping with the family, Elizabeth's cousin is finally preparing to return to London. She assures us that she has had a wonderful time, and it is with a deep bow of gratitude that she says she will make certain to inform everybody back home about how kind the great kingdom of Denmark has been to her and continues to be to her beloved cousin. So, England gets a bonus of 50 in relationship with us, and we gain 10 diplomatic power. And I'll be honest with you guys, I'm having second thoughts about the attack on uh, Wolfgast. I have been doing some calculations, and Wolfgast is allied with Brandenburg and Teutonic Order. But Teutonic Order has the Wivonian Order uh, as a vassal. So we are not only declaring war on Wolfgast, but also on Teutonic Order, uh, Vonian Order, and I'm pretty sure that Bohemia has a fuck ton of smaller allies here. I'm not entirely sure we can win this. Uh, the main reason for my skepticism is that I have uh, thought of whether or not we will use ships to land here, and then I decided that it would be better to take it by uh, by land through here instead of the sea like this because the um, I don't want to say deboarding but uh, getting off the ships is usually uh, takes months uh, but I realized that if all of these enemies are here they might easily overrun Sweden and from the north and I have just one army so I'm not entirely sure logistically how we would do this. Uh, I can bet that we can take Wolfgast fast and then we can keep the sea safe, but I'm still not sure how this will be done, honestly. Uh, it's, it's a great idea that uh, Bohemia is at war with these guys, but unless we can get the Teutonic Order to cancel their alliance with, or you know, their protection of Wolfgast. I am not entirely sure we can do this. Yeah, we can't. I, I'm, I'm not gonna do it. It's gonna be. You can call me a chicken, but I don't think we can take this. We were able to take uh, Schleswig and Holstein by surprise, but I don't think we'll be able to get the, this one done fast enough. Yeah, let's uh, let's chicken out. I'm sorry, I was really psyched about this, but when I realized that the Livonian Order would be also involved, that's another thousands of troops very close to uh, modern Finland and nowadays, <laughs> nowadays Sweden. So this would be probably a suicidal mission. As it's uh, November 1393, I might have to start thinking about abandoning the core here because I don't think we'll be able to take it. Well this is fun. We got a Swedish noble rebels rising up in Herme. Well let's send our army to deal with them, shall we? I'm gonna increase the funding for my army. 
Uh, I found another argument, by the way, why declaring the war on Wolfcast uh, would be a really poor idea. And that is the fact that we have absolutely no forts in Finland. I was kind of surprised to figure that out. But yeah, there's not a single garrison there. So, okay, well, there's one in Pohyanma, but it's not even a fort. It's local fortification. So, Hame and the other provinces are entirely vulnerable to whatever happens to us. So, f here you can see how one unit of rebels could take this all before I even send my troops there. That is entirely ridiculous. But we can invest in a new technology. That's the good news. Cornered gunpower. Oh no, not cornered. Corned gunpower. Uh, enables greater noble artillery, lesser noble artillery, and imperial artillery. I wonder who gets this. Uh, the development of corned gunpowder allowed for heavier and more reliable guns. By rolling the gunpowder paste into a small corn-sized clumps instead of large balls, air was trapped within the powder that allowed for rapid combustion, which made it as much as 300% more powerful than before, where 34 pounds of serpentine gunpowder were needed to fire a 47-pound cannonball, only 18 pounds of corn powder were necessary. Infantry fire and cavalry fire increased. And we can get the state roads. Well, ancient Roman roads endured and paths were beaten through the world by the weight of traffic. True road building was an art that required government oversight. Such early roads involved some earth moving and leveling of harsh terrain. But more importantly, their existence and heavy traffic made inns, wells and way stations more profitable and thus more common. I don't know why that increases the naval... Uh, <laughs> level but hey we're gonna get the latina sailed caravel in the next level and we're gonna get the hulk as a new level of transport so we can go here and fuck these rebels up and we're gonna deal with hammer trying to get independent uh speaking on which let's look at our levels in technology we get eight nine ten Norway has 8, 8, 10, and Sweden got 7, 7, 9. And Bohemia has 8, 8, 9. Their war is not exactly going well, it seems. Yeah, they're losing. What can you do? Uh, and... We're gonna have to destroy these guys. I was looking at the fact that we will be able to integrate our Swedish subjects, but it might take up another nearly 40 years. And for Norway, it's gonna take another 43 years. Uh, however, to be able to get them, we will need to get at least six more provinces, which is a bummer. I don't know exactly how we're gonna get those. <laughs> um, Normally, I would uh, fabricate claim on probably Vagrian and these uh, provinces here, then Straussund and Wolfgast, uh, hoping that um, Teutonic Order will let them go eventually. However, we have a, a Liege who is honest, so I don't think that lying our way around and trying to get claims is the way he would do it. So let's just focus on developing our nation for now and we'll see what, you know, uh, comes to us eventually in time. I think that's a better idea. As we have just uh, finished the road building technology, I have decided to construct roads in our capital. Roads gave uh, decent bonuses. I think I've already shown it somewhere. But let's look at Paris, for example. Uh, Paris has the level 1 road network, and you can see it increases local trade power, trade uh, power bonus, it increases urban gravity modifier, urban production, supply limit, and friendly move. Now we have 73 gold, and you can see that the road upgrade cost here is 209 gold. However, we have things uh, to go around this. Um, these things that I will show you right now works for both for forts and roads. They are not built as a simple building. You can pay off remaining cost with gold, which would cost us 209 gold, 
or we can contribute manpower to the effort. So I can send 2,612 soldiers to remove 25% of the cost uh, of the roads. So I'm going to do that right now. That took our manpower dangerously low, but uh, I'm not planning any wars right now. I think that uh, we just have to let this core go. And I can convince Locos to contribute rural wealth to this. So I'm going to do that. And I can... Crap. They won't allow me to contribute urban. Uh, 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 that's a bit of a problem. I can't... Oh, never mind then. Let's not do that. Okay, a few months later, the government has finally gotten enough money to pay off the remaining cost with gold. So the roads will be upgraded in Norrea Seeland in five years. There's a modifier for this building a road, which tells you when the road is going to be finished and it will pop up as a building, because our capital deserves some roads. And I also wanted to show you a neat little thing that is in um, Mio and Taxes as a core thing. You can't really change cultures anymore, but the cultures change on their own. When you check the population data for each of your provinces that are not your culture, you can see that there is a ticking culture conversion of progress here. So we have already converted uh, almost 20% of the people in this province to Danish culture. It's going to take decades, maybe even a hundred years, but this province will eventually turn to our culture. And on that note, I'm going to end this sort of failed episode where I chicken out from a conflict. Oh hey, they ended, didn't they? Yep, the war has just ended between Bohemia and... Did it? I have seen a cannon here. Nope, it ended between Bohemia, uh, Austria and Hungary. You can see that they reclaimed some of the provinces. I missed the announcement here. However, they did. And our little kingdom is doing fine without that little province. We'll have to... Oh man, it's it sucks so much. I wish I could get this core. But if the Teutonic Order are guaranteeing them, I really do not have the will to break them. It just sucks. <laughs>